I believe that this quality is the one that attracts the most people to Islam. Tell me if you agree. Zakaria is praying in his prayer place and he's given good news. يا زكريا إنا نبشرك بغلام اسمه يحيى لم نجعل له من قبل سميا. O Zakaria, we are giving you the good news of a boy. I mean, it's not just good news. Remember, Zakaria is he's at the end of the road. He's near the end of his life, and children of Israel are at the end of their lifetime, their lifespan of prophethood, of messengership, and there's still a few messengers still coming. And one of them is Yahya alayhi salam. Ya Zakaria, inna nubashiruka bi ghulami nismuhu Yahya. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala adds the incredible honor of naming Yahya. You know, sometimes you might love somebody. You might have like an uncle, for example, who I, I, some cultures are familiar with this. And, and, and maybe your culture is familiar with this too. Where someone who's respectful, maybe like a senior in the family, might actually name the child. And the parents will be so honored by the fact that so-and-so named their child for them. And, and they'll tell everybody that so-and-so is the one who named our child. I want you to think Zakaria salam, his son is named by Allah. We've named him Yahya. لم نجعل له من قبل سمية. But not only that, but Yahya salam, is named a name that nobody else had before. And the meaning of Yahya means literally he lives. لم نجعل له من قبل سمية. Yahya means he lives. But interestingly enough, the name Yahya means he lives, but Yahya himself doesn't live. You know, when, when parents, when parents are naming their children, they're naming based on aspiration. They're naming based on hope. They're naming on their, their dreams of what this child is going to be. And so my father might have thought that I was going to build stuff. So he named me Ammar, rahimahullah ta'ala. But my name doesn't necessarily have to represent my characteristics. There are some people who are named Kareem and they might not necessarily be generous. There are some people who are named Jameel. You get the idea. But the point is, Allah, no offense to any Jameels here, I'm sure you are. Isim ala musamma, I'm sure you're very Jameel. May Allah bless you all. But the idea here is that Yahya is being named by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah knows Yahya's characteristics. Allah knows the unseen. And Allah names him Yahya, even though Yahya is martyred. Yahya is going to be martyred. But what that teaches us is that when Allah speaks about life, it's not limited to the life of this world. That's number one. But number two also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us as well that Yahya, how does Yahya die? Yahya dies as a martyr. And martyrs don't die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتِ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Allah says, don't expect, don't consider that those who are martyred in the path of Allah are dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord being provided for. Not only that, but his name is recorded in the Quran and Yahya alayhi salam is mentioned every single day. People are reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his name is being mentioned and it's his lifespan has been extended. And so Yahya, through all of these meanings, lives. He's the nephew of Maryam since his mother is her older sister and Isa alayhi salam is his cousin. Maryam and Maryam's sister were both pregnant at the same time. And Maryam's sister, Yahya's mother said, I see the one who's in my belly prostrating to the one who's in your belly. I saw a dream where the one who's in my belly, meaning Yahya, was prostrating to the one who is in your belly, Isa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Yahya, khudhi al-kitaba biquwa. In the next verse, Allah says, O oh, Yahya, take the book with strength. This is such a, 
amazing statement. I love this statement. It's such a strong statement. Take the book with strength. Take the truth with strength. We live in a time where the truth is dim, not because of its weakness, but because of the weakness of and the shyness and the impotence of the people carrying it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, take the book with strength. People are attracted to strength. They're not attracted to weakness. This is what I believe. And feel free to disagree. Let me know in the comments, inshallah ta'ala. I believe that the most important quality to attract people to Islam is strength. You go ahead, I ask you, over the past hundred years, who are the people who have called the most people to Islam? Yes, you're gonna rattle Muhammad Ali. Yes, you're gonna rattle, uh, you're gonna mention Malcolm X. Yes, you're going to mention Ahmad Didat. Keep them coming. And what's the shared characteristic between all of these individuals? It's not knowledge. It's not wealth. It's conviction, but not just conviction, the strength of their conviction. And not just the strength of their conviction, but the strength of them communicating their conviction. That in and of itself, if it's coming from a sincere place, has an incredible, incredible magnetism. People become attracted to the truth when it's spoken with strength. People are attracted to falsehood. They're attracted to lies when they're spoken with strength. And so what do you think is going to happen when people speak the truth with strength? Allah says, Ya Yahya, take the book with strength. Take the book with strength. And it's important that we remember that because at the end of the day, we are the ummah of da'wah. Yes, people will support people who are victims. People will support the oppressed. People will support those who are being abused. People will support those who are being discriminated against. But nobody wants to be them. You've supported the oppressed. You've uh, supported the discriminated against. But you never thought to yourself, at least I'm assuming, I would love to be this person one day. No, you want to support that person, but you don't want to be them. And so when we're talking about placing ourselves in a position where people want to look at the Muslim community and say, I want to be like this person, then you have to carry yourself with a dignity. You have to carry yourself with a strength. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he says, we had continued to be dignified since Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu entered into Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Yahya as Sayyidan wa Hasura, a master, a Sayyid, and Hasura means someone who's well protected, well guarded. He's someone, he's talking about his chastity. He was actually described by the Mufassirin as somebody who never once entertained an illicit thought about a woman. He was protected. At the same time, Isa and Yahya, both of them didn't get married in their periods. And yet, Isa, of course, before being lifted up and Yahya before he was martyred. That shouldn't be an understanding of monasticism, though. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as Rahbaniyatun Tada'uha, that it was a monasticism that they innovated. And the Prophet وسلم, told us very, very clearly that marrying is from his sunnah, and whoever deviates from the sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, then he is not of the Prophet. And so marriage does not take a person away from God. Rather, marriage is something that is from the completeness, from the completeness of a human being and with the right intention becomes a great act of worship and from the sunnah of the Prophet The Messenger وسلم, reported in a tirmidhi he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Yahya ibn Zakariya with five commandments. So Yahya and Isa are similar in ages. Their mothers were pregnant with them at the same time so they're probably a few months apart and they're both prophets to Bani Israel at the same time and Yahya alayhi salam is commanded with five words from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, five things that he has to teach Bani Israel. But for whatever reason, he delayed them, the Prophet وسلم, said. And so Isa alayhi salam came to him and he said, Allah commanded you with five commandments and you have to command Bani Israel with them. You have to abide by them and Bani Israel has to abide by them. And so you either command them or I'll command them. So Isa was informed of these commandments as well. He's like, Yahya, he says, no, you don't tell them because I'm afraid if you precede me, if you do it before me, then the earth may swallow me or I'll be punished. Look at the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the taqwa that they had. They're afraid that if one commandment, not that they don't do it, but if they simply delay doing it or somebody else beats them to it, that they'll be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though he's a prophet, the son of a prophet, he's coming from this family of righteousness and all of that. They're still so afraid and they still realize how insignificant they may be in the sight of Allah if they break his commandments. And so Yahya alayhi salam says, I'm afraid that I'll be punished. And so he gathered the people in Jerusalem. He gathers them in, in, in the masjid and they filled the masjid and so much so that they sat upon its balconies. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you with five things and commanded you to abide by them. 
The first of them is that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, having no partners, and that you do not associate anything with him. And the example that he gives is somebody who, who buys a slave, and then he gives that slave over to his businesses, and he says, take care of it, and give me the profits. And then that person goes, and he takes care of the business, and he goes and he gives the profits to somebody else. And so Yahya is speaking to them about something that they know. For us, it would be something like, if you hired somebody, you hired somebody and then you, you, you tell them, hey, at the end of each day, you know, take out the money that's in the cash register and go put it in my account. And they take out the money from the cash register every single day and they go put it in somebody else's account. What would happen? You would fire that person and you would probably take that person to court. Yahya is saying, who would want somebody like that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he said, worship me. And then we're created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings are cascading upon us. And then we go and we worship somebody else or we go and we thank somebody else. Number two, Yahya says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to perform salah. And when you perform salah, that you don't turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is facing you as long as you are facing him. Allah is facing his worshipers as long as they do not turn away. So while you're in salah, that you be present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're conversing with Allah. Number three, he says, he commands you with fasting. And he gives the example of a person who's carrying a pouch and they're walking with their friends. And that pouch has in it musk. And he says that, I mean, everybody, if you've ever hugged somebody who smells amazing, it's just a pleasant experience. When you are in the company of somebody, you get, you get into somebody's car, you walk into somebody's house and it just smells amazing. That experience, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more pleased with the breath of a fasting person than you are with the nicest perfume, the nicest cologne. Number four, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to give charity. And the parable of that is someone who's captured by the enemy and their hands are chained to their neck. And he says, I can ransom myself. Let me go. Here's $5. Let me go. Here's $10. Let me go. Here's $100. They continue to free themselves by giving charity. And that's what we're doing. Charity saves us from the hellfire. Quick pause here. Aisha radiallahu anha, she tells a story of a woman who came to her house and she had two little girls with her. And she was asking Aisha radiallahu anha for some assistance, some food. Aisha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the one who everybody would send gifts to Aisha's house. What did she have? If there's any wife of the Prophet who'd have like a pantry with some food in it, it would be Aisha. Aisha radiallahu anha, all she has are three dates. That's in her house, that's all she's got. And she gives the woman three dates. And the woman gives one of her daughters a date, she gives another of her daughter the other date, and she keeps the third date for herself. The daughters quickly eat each date, and then they're kind of still tugging at their mom. They still see that third date. So that lady, she breaks the date that was gonna be for her, she breaks it in half, and she gives it to each one of her daughters. Aisha radiallahu anha is so impressed, like that moment of kindness just touched her. So later on, she went and she told the Prophet sallallahu about it, and the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed that woman from the hellfire because of what she just gave. She just gave it to her daughters. Like if she's gonna give it to anybody, she would give it to her daughters. But because of that act of kindness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of that charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala freed her from the hellfire. Number five, Yahya says, I command you to the remembrance of Allah. For indeed the parable of that is a man whose enemy quickly tracks him until he reaches an impenetrable fortress in which he protects himself from them. So this is a guy who's being chased by people from the next neighborhood. He's got his enemies, he's got ops, and he's able to get to safety. He's able to go into a house and protect himself. But Yahya alayhi salam, he says, this is how the worshiper is. He doesn't protect himself from shaitan except by the remembrance of Allah. Every day that you and I go out, shaitan is waiting outside of our house. And if a person says, Bismillah, tawakutu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, the Prophet وسلم, says, shaitan turns away from that person but he was waiting to ambush you, always waiting to ambush you. And so how do you protect yourself? You protect yourself by the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the advice that Yahya, John the Baptist gave to the people of Jerusalem, to Bani Israel.